I want to show you guys the parts that I used when I did the timing belt on a Toyota Tundra, Toyota Sequoia. This is on your 4.7 liters, two UZFE engines. You're going to find this also in some of your Lexus applications. Put a, I'll put a list of all the vehicles that this engine is actually in. But uh, went ahead, I did the timing belt on this thing. Uh, one word of caution is this is a very labor intensive job. Um, all the bolts are different sizes. Um, if it hasn't been done in a long, long time, if the time belt hasn't been done in a long, long time, it can take, um, you know, that much longer because of rusted bolts or, you know, stuck components. Uh, one example of that, let me, sh I have the water pump right here. But this is your, um, basically this is, I don't, I don't want to carry out your carrier assembly. I'll put a, I'll put up a title of what it's actually called right now. But this is where your fan clutch rides on, right? So this actually sits right in front of the, right in front of the water pump. All right. So here's your fan clutch. This is my old fan clutch that I took off. And what happens, you have this recessed area, right? Can you guys see that? And that gets actually put into here, right there. And it rusts. It gets rust in there. So you, I had to battle this thing, battle it and battle it. Um, to get this thing out and it took me probably a good couple hours to get this thing unstuck from each other and basically what I had to do it won't even actually go in now doesn't want to go in I'd have to clean all that up to get it to go in so what I had to do you loosen up all the bolts right 12 millimeter bolts here four of them and it should pop right out all the videos I've seen online the guys do all undo the bolts and it just magically pops off right didn't happen with me so I knew I was replacing these components, so I didn't really care what happened here um, as far to the mating surface. I had to get a screwdriver and basically pry it, you know, go around, put it in there, pry it open, turn it, you know, 90 degrees, pry it open again. Uh, so this can actually be really seized on there. I, uh, I used penetrating oil. Yeah, you can actually see where I marred the surface right here when I took it off, right? So that can be a real pain in the pain in the butt to do that. If you're going to do this job, if you're going to go this deep into the into the vehicle in the front of the engine, I cannot stress enough how important it is to replace all these components. And the po components I'm talking about is the um, is this. Why can't I think of the word for this? This is the um, assembly that the uh, fan clutch sits on. Okay, replace your fan clutch, right? You're going to go in there, you're going to replace your timing belt, get an ASIN timing belt component kit. Here's the one that I used, ASIN KTK021, for those of you who cannot read. Comes with your time or water pump, your timing belt, TBK instruction card, gasket kit, hydraulic tensioner, idler bearing, tensioner bearing. Comes with everything you need to get this job done correctly. It does not come with the fan clutch. It does not come with the fan clutch carrier and it doesn't come with your new tensioner either right so i replaced this tensioner as well and this is the tensioner that the actual um fan belt sits on the drive belt all right i'll put links down in the description below to all this all these parts that i use but just know if you're going this deep into it you need to use quality parts and you need to change them out all right so here's your water pump i couldn't find any markings on this as far as what brand it is the acing kit i got actually had a stamp right here on the new one so you're going to change out your water pump gasket which is right here this is like a multi-layer steel head gasket pretty amazing but you see it's you can see it's falling apart here you do not put any rtv on this do not put any rtv no sealant you just install this right here well, I mean, obviously, make sure your engine block is clean. Your new water pump's going to be clean. You put this on there. You put you put the you mount the water pump, and then tighten everything down to torque specs. Okay. Here's your tensioner idler or your timing belt tensioner idler. The actual the actual tensioner for the timing belt actually rests right there. All right. Yeah, that's the last thing you do before you set. When, once you get you know timing all set up. That's the last thing you do. Once you have your belt on, everything's lined up, your top cam, your left cam, your right cam, the crank is all lined up. You pull the pin 
on the little tensioner and it, the, the pin actually pushes out a little uh, piston and pushes this and puts tension on the tying belt. And this is just an idler pulley. But they are, let's see, this is a co coil bearing right there. Can you guys see that? That is a coil bearing. And I think this one as well, this one is two, or it's NSK. Yeah, this one's an NSK. So these are quality bearings. NSK, coil, quality bearings. Probably came with the kit or whoever did the pump last. I don't know who did it. You're also going to change out your, this is your top radiator hose. This is your bottom radiator hose. If you haven't done your thermostat in a long, long time, it's also a good idea to do that as well. And here is the um, drive belt tensioner that I picked up from Toyota. Part number is 16620-0W101 for those of you who cannot read. All right, yeah, I decided, hey, if I'm going this deep into it, gotta change everything else out. And here's the time belt. The new timing belt actually comes with its own marks. I just did this out of habit. I usually mark the top. Let's see. Can I show you? Yeah. So that's the passenger side. That's the crank. This would have been the driver's side. And I mark it in two spots on the belt and on the cams. Two spots there on the passenger side. And down here on the bottom on the crank, CR is for crank. I mark it in two spots. I actually marked it in three spots. And I mark it on the crank as well. That way I know when everything's going back together, everything's nice and lined up. Real nice lack. Real nice lack. Uh, another thing that I highly, highly recommend is that you take out the radiator when you do this. The radiator has a transmission cooler going through it. And these little clamps right here is what I use to block off. Um, they're basically, they're, they, this is the tool that's designed for this. It pinches the transmission line the rubber transmission line so that transmission fluid doesn't keep continuously leaking out while you're working on it great little tools links in the description below for all this stuff um what else any specialty tools that i needed to use yes i needed a crank pulley kit to get the uh crank shaft pulley off so this is part of a this is part of a bigger kit but this is only what i could reach that's sitting on the table still but yeah you need a um pulley pulley puller to pull the pulley and the crankshaft pulley off uh let's see anything else anything else so on the front and the back of the engine i'll see if i can put up a shot up of it right a shot up of it right now but there's a coolant passage that goes it's on the front and it's on the back of the engine and on the water pump this little um hole right here actually gets put onto the the coolant passage tube right so this hole goes in a larger coolant passage tube that's probably a foot long and that gets connected to the engine block right uh, when it gets where the coolant passage tube gets connected to the engine block you have these gaskets these gaskets do not last a lifetime so if you're in there go ahead change these out the same kind of pipe sits the, at the back of the engine when you get near your starter um, if you're doing a starter on this vehicle, if you take the coolant passage off on the back, it makes it a lot easier to get the starter out and in. But you need to replace these gaskets. There's four total on this vehicle, on this specific engine, that you need to change out. All right, let me see if I can find the new ones that I used. And I'll put links down in the description below to that as well. Here are the two gaskets you need. Same exact thing. Felpro, Felpro part number is 35941. Four of them total on this engine. But well, if you're doing the front, you only need two. If you're doing the back, you need two. So you can see how, well, I had to beat that one up to get it out, but you can see how mangled and disgusting that was getting. And actually the rubber seal that you see right here is actually separating on the old one. So if you're going this far into it, you want to do the job right, do these seals. Another tool that helped me get the job done a little bit quicker was my chemo 3 8 electric ratchet i'll put links down in the description below but this thing is awesome i know scotty kilmer has a video where he's ragging on this stuff but i have had no problems issues with it he was talking about how oh it, you see an electric current down there yeah you can see it right there right there's an electric current if you're 
working around high, you know, gasoline or propane, whatever the case may be. I don't care if it sparks like that a little bit. So what? Who cares, dude? Who gives a crap? All these tools are made in China. I don't care if you get them from Matco, Snap-on, Mac, Cornwell, whatever the case may be. Milwaukee, they're all made in China. Nothing's made in the U.S. anymore. The U.S. has become a country of warehousing, right? And China is the one that has manufacturing. We just warehouse. We just warehouse the stuff that China makes. But let me think. Is there anything else? Anything else you guys need to know? That I can help you out with. Quite a bit of tools and quite a bit of time. Uh, use red Toyota coolant, and that's the that's the non-diluted one. There's a red one that's non-diluted. There's a pink coolant that Toyota offers. That's actually already diluted 50-50. If you buy the red stuff, you can actually dilute it yourself. Use distilled water. But if you get two gallons. You can actually cut that down into four with uh, distilled water. So you get two gallons of red coolant, Toyota red coolant, and two gallons of distilled water. And you can make yourself four, four, uh, four gallons. This engine took about three, just a little bit over three gallons to, to, to top off once everything was said and done, once this job was complete. One thing I forgot to share with you guys, when you guys are putting the fan clutch back on, put some anti-seize on this flange right here and into this nipple as well so next time you do the job or whoever else is going to go do the job after you it just makes it that much easier and they don't have to battle with this thing when they're trying to take it out all right any sees here here and i guess you could, if you really really wanted to you could put some on here and here as well just a little bit you know just put a little bit in your finger spread it out you know a couple pea size and uh you'll be good to go there you go. If you guys have any questions, if I can help you out in any way, uh, you can always email me at Bundy's Garage at gmail.com. I'll be happy to try to help you guys out or guide you, whatever you may or may not need. But uh, like I said, if uh, this job is very intensive, a lot of stuff has to come off just to get to this water pump. All right. So there you guys go. 